الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أنا الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد عباد الله اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق التقوى وراقبوه في جميع أحوالكم سرا وجهرا يقول تبارك وتعالى في القرآن العزيز بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending our peace and blessings to our noble Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam. And I remind myself and yourselves on this blessed and noble day of Yawm al-Jumu'ah to fear Allah. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way He should be feared. In the way we live, in the way we speak, in the way we act. As Allah reminds us to fear Him in the Qur'an when He told us, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah the way He should be feared. And do not die except in the state of submission to him. We ask Allah we die in the state. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. 
Brothers and sisters, it, in this dunya, there are many things that can be classified as good or bad relative to what it is that we're measuring it to. And every good and bad that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deemed to be good or bad is either absolutely good, which is the good. And the bad also has some good in it by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the difference between the two is that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted for us and told us is good will be eternally good for us and will not cut off. It is ajil, it is later. But the good that a person can see within the bad is ajil, is something that is hastened, is something that is now. And this is why, brothers and sisters, that the good that people see within bad and what was classified and categorized as bad by Islam and by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deemed to us as something that's bad, it will never fully satisfy a person for two reasons. The first, that the good in it is temporary and will never be continuous and will never uh, become eternal. There's some satisfaction that can come with it, but it will be cut off and it will stop. And the second reason is that the bad or that the good within this bad, even if it persists and continues, it will end with our death. And everything after it will be only regret and remorse. So, because of this, we need to be keen to what benefits us in this dunya. And what actually helps us in this life and in the hereafter. Because in life we have many options and opportunities to do anything we want. But there's always that thing that will truly benefit us most. And this is why in a profound hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he taught us the path to achieving success and true happiness. Because this is something we all look for. This is something every single one of us is trying to find. We're trying to be successful and we're trying to find true happiness. That can only come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course. And there are many a hadith, you know, where the Prophet ﷺ teaches us how to achieve this. But in one profound hadith, and as we know, the Prophet ﷺ's qawl is, is jawami' al-kalim. The Prophet ﷺ was given elaborate, the ability to deliver concise statements that if you elaborate on them, will come out with an abundance of meanings. So you can extract so many meanings from one hadith. As a matter of fact, just one hadith is enough to live by and in accordance to, and it will make a person upright. And this hadith is one of them. It was narrated in Sahih Muslim, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is a long hadith, and we will explain this hadith in this khutbah. He said, Al-Mu'min al-Qawi khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al-Mu'min al-Da'if wa fi kullin khayr. 
احرص على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله ولا تعجز ولا تقل لو كان كذا وكذا لكان كذا وكذا لأن لو تفتح أبواب الشيطان Okay In the first part of the hadith the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said المؤمن القوي the strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer although they can both have khair in them and they both have khair in them strength here is not merely physical strength as many of us will think of when we hear the word strength and strength is not only spiritual strength but strength here has to do with the rest of the hadith that we're going to explain which speaks about living up to your full potential and trying your best to achieve what you're capable of achieving a strong believer here is a believer that trusts in Allah seeks help from Allah and looks for what is best for them tries their best and achieves their full potential and the weak believer here is the believer that is capable of achieving but does not due to laziness or timidness or laxness or because they can care less or because they don't see the point in it there are so many reasons why a person can be considered a weak believer a strong believer is the one who strives with their fullest potential that Allah gave them and gave them responsibility over because what we have from power, strength, health, wealth, everything is only a responsibility that Allah put on our shoulders and there are people that live up to that potential of theirs and there are people that don't live up to that potential of theirs and the people that don't are the weak believers that the Prophet ﷺ was referring to in the hadith. And then he continued to say a very profound statement alayhi salatu wasalam. Look at this. Just one hadith, Ya Allah. Imagine if only one thing we want to learn from the Prophet ﷺ, let's learn this. After La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and following him alayhi salatu wasalam. Look, he said, Be keen to what benefits you. Be keen, احرص على ما ينفعك. Be keen to what benefits you. Hence why I began the khutbah with what I began with. There's always, there are always things that are good that we can look for and that we can find. And there are things that are good but ultimately fall under the category of bad because ultimately they will be bad for us and they are temporary and they will cut off. They will end and we will regret them. So the Prophet ﷺ said, احرص على ما ينفعك Be keen to that which benefits you. Always have a great goal in life. Strive to be the best. Why accept the least? Find the best acts of worship. Exemplify and put in your character and embody the best of characteristics and manners. Why not seek the best? If we know that this is the best, why not strive for it? Why not try to be it? We only have one chance in life. Life is too short. If we're healthy now, we're sick tomorrow. If we're young now, we're old tomorrow. It's too short to waste time not achieving the highest of goals, highest of manners, or striving for the best 
acts of worship that get us closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. Be keen to what benefits you, is what he said alayhi salatu was salam. Ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda, he said a very nice statement. He said, there's not a day that I regretted more than a day where the sun set, I got older, and my actions did not rise. My good deeds did not elevate me. He said, there's no day that I regret more than that day where the sun set, I got older, and my actions didn't raise me and elevate me. Be keen to what benefits you, is what he said, alayhi salatu was salam. In another hadith, under be keen to what benefits you, the Prophet ﷺ was asked about Islam, and he said that Islam is, you know, to believe in Allah, and then what is Iman, and then the Prophet ﷺ described what Iman is, to believe in Allah, and his messengers, and his books, and his angels, right, and to be resurrected on the day, on the, on the day of judgment, so on. And then he was asked, what is the best? What is the best form of Iman? Because then we have Islam. And then above it is what? Iman. And then he described Iman, and then he asked, what is the best form of Iman, Ya Rasulullah? He said, Al-Hijrah, to do Hijrah. And we're thinking Hijrah means like what? To migrate and to leave. No, 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 no. He asked, and what is the best Hijrah? What is the best Hijrah? So now we're talking about the best of the best of the best, right? He said, An tahjur as su To what? To leave. Because Hijrah means to leave or to migrate away from, right? He said, to leave what? Asu, evil, to leave bad things. Be keen to what benefits you. Because being keen to what benefits you is the strongest form of faith there is. There is no form of faith stronger than this according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why he said, he, ha- he has jawam al-kalim, the most profound statement for us to live by and in accordance to that he said alayhi salatu was salam. And a Muslim who is keen to that which benefits them will never be found distracted or wasting their time with other people's business and things that don't benefit them in any way or just reading about celebrities or singers or scrolling down a, a social media page of some influencer just wondering what they posted not even looking for benefit but just out of pure and sheer curiosity a Muslim who is keen to that which benefits them will not be found doing that because the Prophet ﷺ said من حسن Islam المرء تركه ما لا يعني. it is from the perfection of your faith of your Islam that you mind your own business and you leave what you have no business in. If you're in a gathering and everyone is not benefiting you, then be keen on replacing that gathering with a gathering that benefits you more. If there's a person that you befriend that's not benefiting you and helping you rise to your fullest potential, then be keen on finding someone that will help you live your fullest potential. Don't waste your time with things, with bad habits, with people, with video games, with movies, with whatever it is that will not help you. Because you have a greater potential than that. And being keen on what benefits you is the best thing you can do. And the strongest form of hijrah, and tahjur as which is the complete opposite of what, it's like the inverse of, of, of uh, being keen to what benefits you. And then the next part of the hadith, he said, وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجَزْ And in another narration, he said, وَلَا تَعْجَزَنْ 
The Prophet Sallallahu he said, okay, Ya Allah, I know I want to live my potential. I want to do this, but you know, it's, it's, it's tough. The mountain is high. How am I going to climb it? The struggle is real. It takes days and nights of exerting yourself to your fullest so you can achieve your potential. But he said, Ista'an billah. Seek help and assistance from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَعْجَزْ And do not feel powerless. Listen to what he said, alayhi salatu wassalam. He said, seek help and assistance from Allah. Don't call your friend, or mom or baba, or look, you know, search on Google, or do so, or, 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 or say, okay, I need to take this drug or supplement, or I need to run to this doctor. No, 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 the first place you go to seek help and assistance from is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, seek help and assistance in Allah wala ta'jaz. Do not feel powerless. Do not think, O believer, O seeker of truth, O striver of Jannatul Firdaus, do not think that you are powerless because Allah made you powerful. You have a potential. And the fact that you thought of a goal that you're pursuing means that you're capable of pursuing it. Because if you weren't capable of it, you, Allah wouldn't have put it in your mind to begin with. You are capable. But try. أَفَمَنْ يَمْشِي مُكِبًّا عَلَىٰ وَجْهِهِ أَهْدَىٰ أَمَّنْ يَمْشِي سَوِيًّا عَلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Is the one who walks with their face down on their face. On their face. Better than the one who walks upright on a straight path towards Allah. La wallah. That's not, there's no comparison between the two. The one who walks upright and straight without their head being down, straight on the straight path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is always going to achieve more. Know that you are powerful and you are capable, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the assistance if you seek it. Allah will give you the assistance if we seek it. This is one of the main things that we say 17 times a day. Say, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Ya Allah, we worship you and we seek help and assistance from you. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ told one of the companions, he taught his companions to say a particular hadith after every salah, to say a particular dhikr, remembrance, after every salah. He said, do not leave it, ever. He told Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, do not ever leave this dhikr after every salah that you do. What, what was it? He said, say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrik wa shukrik wa husni ibadatik. O oh Allah, assist me to remember you and assist me to be grateful to you and assist me and help me to do what? To worship you properly the way you want me to. So without the assistance of Allah, we will not have the power to even worship Him or be, be grateful to Him. So know that seeking the assistance of Allah is number one in seeking our goals and in being keen to to doing what is good for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are keen to that which is good for them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us successful in achieving our goals. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path and to not let us ever go astray. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and have mercy on us. أقول ما سمعتم وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وكفى وصلاة الله وسلامه على عباده الذين اصطفى لا سيما عبده المصطفى وأهله الطيبين الطاهرين الأسياد الشرفاء عباد الله اتقوا الله My brothers and sisters I remind myself and yourselves to fear Allah in what it is that we're 
pursuing in life. And to fear Allah in assessing our true abilities and our potential. And to know that we are capable of so much more than what we think we are capable of. But there is an issue that happens to many people in the suit, in the pursuit of good. And that is when they miss out on something better for something that is less good, they say, man, they do a business deal, they could have made a hundred thousand, but they've sold it short and they only made fifty. See, man, only if I waited till Bitcoin went to this, then I would have made that much. Only if this were to happen, this would have happened. And this is one of the ways of shaitan to hold us down and to make us give up on ourselves and to be powerless. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallu al rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is why he alayhi salatu wa sallam ended this profound hadith with and do not say if so if this and this were to happen to me then I would have had this and this or this and this would have happened to me because if opens the door to shaitan this is what rasul sallallahu said he said because the word if opens the door for shaitan shaitan ya'idukum al faqr shaitan wants you to be poor in faith wants you to be poor in wealth wants you to be poor in health wants you to be poor in motivation wants you to be poor in strength and power and in dignity and honor and everything Shaitan wants you to do that. And one of the doors of Shaitan that the Prophet ﷺ informed us of was the word if. On the, in the pursuit to that which is good for us, we should always seek help from Allah and not feel powerless, live up to our fullest potential, strive for the best goals, know that we're good enough to do it, and not say... If I didn't do this, then this, or if I did this, then this. Just say, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَكِنْ قُلْ قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ End of hadith. But say, it is the decree of Allah, and what Allah decrees is what will happen. Allahu Akbar. Isn't it so much more beautiful to say this when you miss out on an opportunity? or when you miss out on something good that you think would have been amazing for you, say no. Allah decreed it this way, and what He decreed is always better. Because I don't know. Maybe He deprived me of this thing that I see as better for a reason beyond my scope that I can't understand. Qadr Allah wa ma fa'al. Wallahi, if we truly understand this hadith, we would rid of our, ourselves of so much sadness that we go through. So much grief, so much blame that we put on ourselves, so much burden that we put on our nafs. If we only understood this hadith and applied it in our life. Al Mu'min al Qawi, Khairun wa Ahabu ila Allah, min al Mu'min al Daif, wa fi kulin Khair, istain billah, aw ihris ala ma yan fa'uk, wa istain billahi wa la ta'jaz. وَلَا تَقُلْ لَوْ كَانَ كَذَا وَكَذَا لَكَانَ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَلَكِنْ قُلْ قَدَّرَ اللَّهُ وَمَا شَاءَ فَعَلْ لِأَنَّ لَوْ تَفْتَحْ أَبْوَابَ الشَّيْطَانِ عباد الله إني داع فأمنوا اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اغفر لنا هزلنا وجدنا وخطأنا وعمدنا وكل ذلك عندنا اللهم حرر أقصانا اللهم حرر أقصانا اللهم حرر أقصانا اللهم عاف مبتلانا اللهم أطعم جائعنا اللهم أطعم جائعنا 
واكس عاريانا وكن للمستضعفين منا يا رب العالمين اللهم كن للمستضعفين من المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم كن لهم عونا ونصيرا ومؤيدا وظهيرا يا رب العالمين اللهم عنا على نصرتهم اللهم عليك بمن شتم الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم عليك بمن أساء للرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أنزل لعنتك ودائرتك عليهم يا رب العالمين وأرنا فيهم عجائب قدرتك يا رب العالمين اللهم أرنا في أعداء دينك عجائب قدرتك يا رب العالمين فإنهم لا يعجزونك عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله اللهم بعد Inshallah, brothers here on, on the left side of the musalla, can you all just take a step back to the row behind, inshallah, because we have uh, some brothers in the front that are on the row, the incomplete row. So, inshallah, if you guys can step back. Ayman, I see you. You can go back, inshallah. Mu'ad, yeah. We'll call you out. Inshallah, you still get the ajr, inshallah, no problem. Barakallah, <laughs> استو استو اعتذر الله اكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن شاء الله just a quick reminder that today after Maghrib uh, we have a guest speaker, Sheikh Fahad Taslim. He's coming out and he's going to share uh, a very nice uh, talk with us, Bidnillah Azza wa Jal. So please come out between Maghrib, between Maghrib and Asha tonight. And for the youth, tonight uh, for the fusion, we're all linking up at Mojio's restaurant after Isha. After Isha, inshallah. And we're going to have a, a special crew. Our brother, Sheikh Omar Hajjaj, came all the way from UK. Uh, with a, a whole, like, mashallah, entourage. A bunch of brothers from the UK, they're going to share a talk with us. They're at Mojio's Pizza. Come, have some pizza, enjoy. This is for the youth, inshallah. The fusion crowd, you guys already know what the deal is. So just come out, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. 